Hey guys, Papa Rums here. You're gonna wanna stay tuned on this episode. I'm picking Hen of the Wood mushrooms, moitakis, and we're gonna be pickling them and jarring them. Part of the new homesteading playlist that I have up above. Feel free to check it out. It's a lot of pressure canning of moose, bear, deer, and much more to come this winter. Pickling mushrooms is one fantastic way to preserve your mushrooms for long-term storage. And what could go better with any kind of cold cut sandwich? Filet mignon, tenderloin, venison backstrap, slap some pickled mushrooms on top, and you have yourself a delicious meal. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up, leave a comment at the end if you have any questions. And if you don't, leave a comment anyway. Love to hear from you guys. Hope you're enjoying, and these are amazing. One episode you don't wanna miss. Here we are back at the same exact tree that I was at last year and we did a shoreside lunch. Awesome video. Please check that one out. It was a great video by the way. This time around now that I'm doing the homesteading playlist I want to just go over what we're doing. So first off you have to be able to identify your mushrooms. Never do this. This is a little disclaimer added. Do not take my videos for granted and do not go picking them based upon my videos alone. Make sure you seek additional help. Go with a professional. It can be deadly. I'm just going to put it out how it is. So be very cautious when you pick mushrooms. But if you get the correct mushrooms, they are not only highly sought after, but they are delicious. One of the ways that we try to preserve them is pickling them. It can add to the longevity of having a nice firm mushroom and it'll keep it for quite a while. We keep them for up to two, three years. Or you can freeze them. What we're doing here is I have a nice long sharp knife. So what you want to do is when you collect your mushroom and if you want to learn the identifications, check my mushroom playlist. And again, you can watch the other video on harvesting them last year and I cooked them up shoreside. That was just a great video. Adirondack foliage was just popping on the lake. Really, really beautiful stuff. So once you have your identified mushroom, you're gonna want to chop off the bottom nice and clean in the wood. So when you pick it, you cut it off so it leaves the spores, it'll keep coming out. This tree we found, I think about five years ago and every year it produces. Um, mind you, you got to watch the temperature, humidity, and uh, rain. If we get rain, which it did three days ago, I usually come here with the right temperature in the 40s, and we get good mushroom. What I notice now is every year I get bigger and bigger clumps because I'm shaking the spores around. And what we also have is the chicken of the wood mushroom for the first year is growing all around here. I don't know where that one came from. We didn't dump it, but they're all around here as well. So we're getting two types of mushrooms, both edible. I don't, I'm not crazy about the chicken of the woods. I find them more of a, a woody mushroom. A lot of people like them. But when there's so many other delicious mushrooms that are far better, I go for them. Although the chicken of the woods do have a lot of anti-inflammatories in them, where these have more cancer fighting the hen of the woods. So different things and they're good to eat as well, but I prefer these. These are the, the prime mushroom that I like to pick and uh, we're getting them before the bugs get them, I could tell. You're gonna to wanna to make sure they're totally firm. If they have a lot of holes in them, just fry them up that night, cook them that way, eat them. But because these are perfect, we're gonna cut every one of these around, clean them, and I'm gonna show you how we prep them. But first, we gotta pick them. So stay tuned, let's get these picked up, and we'll uh, bring them in. There's a lot of cleaning to do. So these spores are microscopic and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put them in a wicker basket so the spores can fall out through all the cracks and holes as you walk. And as you dangle that, they're going to just fall out spreading all over the forest floor. And if the conditions are right and it's up against a proper tree with the proper decay, it'll spore up and produce fruit. So that's why you always see everybody with a wicker basket. Those are preferable, a pack basket's okay, but this is preferable. So you have your clump here. This is what they're gonna look like up against an oak tree. Uh, I've never found them really up against other trees uh, too often. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is get up the underneath side. So if you look, the whole thing will move as a clump. This is really two clumps here divided right here in the middle. But you're gonna to wanna to take your long knife, come all the way equal to the floor level parallel, and you're gonna come across cutting it nice and clean. Okay, so you have your two clumps here, and when you pull them up, you're gonna have all your dirt on the bottom Just side. Just take them and 
clean right around the bottoms here. Just kind of cut with your knife. That's why you want a long edge sharp knife. And then that's a lot of the spores in the root and that goes exactly where I pulled it out of in the same hole. And we try to get as much of that dirt off the bottom. So you have quite a bit here that'll cake up. And when you wash them, you're gonna have all that dirt go in between so you don't want that. So you just kind of try to clean that and shave it right off here too. And we're gonna put all this back in this area. You could eat it if you could wash it, but I mean, we have a lot of mushrooms we're gonna be going through. You wanna get rid of all that dirt. Cause as this shakes onto the other mushrooms that are in your basket, you're gonna get it all fallen in between all the layers right where you want to eat it. And then when you go to eat them, you're gonna have grit and you don't want to eat grit. See here, you're always gonna have with wild mushrooms, dirt in them, not cultivated. But these are beautiful, beautiful, beautiful hens of the woods, other known as maitake. So just kind of flick that off, take care of them. They'll take care of you and it'll be less work later. You're always gonna have little insects inside. That's normal, as long as they're not rooting into We're it. We're gonna get these cleaned up and picked, and then we'll go to the next step of how to clean them, how to wash them, and then how to pickle them. I mean, they're just popping up everywhere here. I'm getting more and more and more of them constantly. Look how beautiful. These are chickens and they're already uh, shot. So we're gonna leave them. They'll come out next year. Maybe I'll pick them from here. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. I mean, come on, that is awesome. Ah, I love them. One thing I learned as a kid, I was always taught never to eat raw wild mushrooms. They have a lot of bacteria and pathogens that you don't get from other mushrooms uh, cultivated. So it's not best practice. Not that you can't do it. It's just not best practice to do it. You just never know what you, what's going to happen. Um, you might get poisoned, so be careful with that. Not to mention a raccoon with rabies could have went and pissed on it as they're coming up and down the tree. See, I shake them like this and I get out a lot of it too. I'm gonna go get a pack basket because I have a lot here to collect. We ended up getting a pack basket because there's too many mushrooms. So we put one of the clumps down and then you just wanna carefully put them on top. The pack basket seems to also do a lot of the same thing. It has a lot of holes. So you can put a lot of the mushrooms in and the spores will spread right through when you carry it through the forest which is what you want to do because you're trying to conserve it. You're trying to bring these out. But usually here where we get them in the Northeast, they got to come off of a oak tree or around it. I think the one video I have in the Adirondacks picking fall mushrooms, I believe we ended up picking them. I forgot if it was on a birch or a maple, but we ended up finding them. But we have a pretty full pack here. And this is the first tree I came to. We had a lot of water, a lot of cold, perfect humidity, perfect temperature. And we're gonna end up doing really well this season with these. They're a lot of work too, so you don't wanna get them all one shot and then you can't take care of them. Um, but we are gonna be able to do what we have to do with them. Here you go. You got a, a good, good 25 pounds there, easy, of solid mushrooms. All right. So here with my father, I just found another cluster. And we're gonna take these two. Get a big knife? Yeah, a good knife, we'll cut them. Okay, so we just got back right now and we also have black walnuts. These are drying out already. They usually have a big um, casing around them. I have a video in my edible plant and mushroom playlist. You can check that out. But I just figured, you know, it's homesteading and we'll just show that too. 
because what we'll do is we'll dry them out and then we'll crack them during the winter and eat them with a little pick high iodine content good for antiseptic the shell but watch the video there's a lot in there on that uh, we also do it with hickory nut and maybe acorn this year so i just figured that was something cool to show and if you're curious how we dry these we end up just putting them in the minnow traps and the air allows us to get around all of it perfect and that's just one way how we're drying them but here's the hen of the woods we're gonna um just go through how to clean them and then i'm gonna go out and get more because this is about 25 to 30 pounds and they're quite a bit out there right now they're just starting to pop they're prime the bugs didn't get them and i want to make sure we get a lot of them these here are my favorite they're real crunchy little guys but if you could tell there's a lot of little dirt fragments all in between and we're going to want to make sure we get each and every one of those so you're going to want to break it down into each petal like that so you have one petal and then these get washed rinsed rinsed again and then pickled and that's a process got my mother here she hates being on camera so give me a shout out for that a nice little cluster you turn it upside down who got the mushrooms her lovely lovely yeah. son cut it off from the stem and they're all in layers so you take a layer at a time we'll put it in a bowl put it this way there's so many ways so however it comes easier you could peel them apart by your fingers right. too and i usually use a knife because there's a lot there's a lot of dirt in between so if it doesn't come off with my knife or with your fingers you just kind of scrape it off but the knife is easier you rinse them off and you put them in your container see how they have all that dirt that's what we got to get out sometimes they're better sometimes they're harder but these look good these have a lot of dirt in them though well not, not a lot as bad because we had worse in the past yeah so these are not too too bad some of the clumps like this one you gotta watch i wonder if we could get a vacuum cleaner no, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so but that would be too easy a lot of people don't realize how much effort and how much work we used to have our our dear friend joe and he used to come down we used to get remember that one weekend oh. over a hundred pounds and in one shot we the picked pickup truck was loaded. we had the whole eight foot bed filled to the top of mushrooms it was probably more than 100 pounds obviously it had to be a lot and we were there for i think three and a half days straight boiling we had the whole assembly line and we had homemade wine so we were just getting it done and it took a lot of work it's it's a lot of work but then at the end you have beautiful fresh top grade mushrooms that restaurants die for all winter long into the spring and summer of next year can't beat it you cannot beat that he's just chopping it up and these pieces here she used to throw them out but what i do is i make cutlets out of them i, I cut them thin and i fry them up they're actually really really good but you can throw them around a tree too if you have a good oak but this is the process that we follow and you know there's other ways to do it but this is how we do it we just uh you know make sure we get every piece of dirt because it's not fun to bite into it but if you look here watch this i don't know if you can see it oh, broke it you get the little snow there's a those. lot of no a lot of moisture i'm trying to show oh. see all the water so the key with mushrooms are if you notice when i was in the woods picking them i said hey you got to wait like a week after or three four days after good rain colder temperatures and humidity everything has to be a matching set point and the reason why is the mushrooms will uptake the spore will uptake that water and the majority of the mushroom is water so when you go to do this process is a part we're gonna have to take that water and extract it out so i'll show you that too but that's why you look for water when it rains because it's going to plump up the mushroom and feed it and they grow really quick like three days to five days and they're already out look at it she's going quick here slow it down no, just okay. kidding no i'm kidding run <laughs> you want to go quick but see she leaves them in clumps i don't i break these down into no i do when i wash them oh okay when I wash them, then, then you break it down just easier to grab and then when i wash oh, them, i see okay right i split them up and then i uh, see i, I caught i break them. them ahead of time into little pieces but yeah, it's a well, lot no, of work i don't want to i don't want to lose all these little tiny ones yeah so that's, that's true. why i leave them and then when i get to the sink you i kind not. of open them up and then I wash them, I make them smaller, and I go in between, because look, the dirt is all in between. And that's when I wash it, I go smaller, and I wash them. I just want to show you, if you had bugs in them, see how clean white that is? 
Look at this. These are the ones she's extracting and getting out. See the hole and the yellow tint? That's because the bugs are already getting into it. So it's important that you want to discard that, get rid of it. Not that you can't eat it, just, you know, why bother when you're eating all this good stuff here. So here's one of them with the bug, and that's how they are. They have the hole right in the middle, and the bugs are in them. So you just want to make sure you get all that out. You just flick them out, and that's why you get the holes there, because they embed and eat it. We're cleaning the mushrooms, washing them one by one. If uh, these were the domestic ones that you could buy, you don't have to wash them. Most of the chefs, they just kind of scrape off a little bit and they saute them with a little butter and garlic, just the way they are. But being that these are wild, they have a lot of dirt bedded in. So you, I like to always wash them thoroughly and scrape off all the dirt. So then I kind of make smaller uh, pieces and I throw them in the tray and this way they'll be ready for uh, boiling regardless if you're going to pickle them or if you're going to just boil to put them in your freezer you could do them either way so right now i'm just in the process of washing them all and then we're going to figure out what we're going to do with them little trickle of cold water mm -hmm. and that's it that's some a long wash, grueling yeah. process some wash easier and some are very hard and because they're all bedded in now you don't have to do it this way you can put them in a colander and try but it doesn't come out no you'll never get the dirt off because the it, dirt will always stay so mm -hmm. you just try to do your best and get it out that's it now every type of mushroom is different as well so some you could just use a wet rag and pull them but this type of mushroom here oh look at that bar this type of mushroom here, you absolutely have to try to clean it like this is one of the easier ways we found. If not, you're going to be crunching all the dirt. Every bite you take, you're going to be crunching on the dirt and you don't want to do that. All right, so good morning. We've been going at it all night. I've been here all night slaving away we just actually got another two bags so we're getting quite a bit um definitely around like the 35 pound mark for everything total uh which is a lot to process in one night so these are just a small portion of it and what i wanted to show you is here i'm going to make a breakfast omelet so i just have uh some stuff out of the garden we have some garlic onion chive and then just black pepper paprika parsley and garlic salt, some eggs, you got three eggs there. But these pieces are unique. A lot of people throw these out. And they're not, the reason why I throw them out is because they're not like, uh, you know, the choice cut, because this is a choice here. These but, are those right there. And these are the bottom pieces. Most people would just discard that because it's really uh, a lot harder, but it tastes really good. So I'm not gonna let it go to waste. We have some fresh olive oil and you want to get the water out of these. So just throw these in. You're going to hear them cooking down a little bit because they have pretty much all water in them. All right, so I'm going to let that simmer for about five, 10 minutes and then I'll all come right. back. So for the last 10 minutes, the vapor has been boiling off and that's just the humidity. So I'm going to flip them over and now they look like a golden brown potato. That's why you want to just kind of like let them render, let them sit and soak. And that's the best way to, to do this for this type here because it's thicker. So now these are pretty much cooked, but I'm just going to let them cook down a little further. I like them crispy. And we're going to probably throw a couple of these in there too. Like this much. This many. Get a couple of those. Moist, the moisture is all boiling off of the ones I just put in. And that's what you want to see. You want to get that moisture out of the mushroom so it can cook down. And now what we're going to do is just make a little pocket here, right in the middle. And we're going to put the garlic and the onion right in. It. It's gonna soak up the flavor into the mushroom here, and the smells are amazing. You don't want to do it early on because it's gonna burn. So it's a little bit of garlic salt, and not a lot, just a little bit. 
Here's a little paprika. You don't even have to use any of these if you don't want it. A little black pepper. And a little bit of parsley. And dried parsley. You could get fresh if you have it, it's better. I do have it, but I just felt like grabbing this instead. So now at this point, you only have like a minute. If that, you, it'll burn on you pretty quick. So just kind of toss it around, let it get seasoning on everything before you add your egg. Take your eggs, you can put however many you want. I put three. And, and now you can take your chives, sprinkle them on top. Put some cheese on it, whatever kind of cheese you have. And then I just kind of flip it like this. Broken omelet, but it'll taste good. And that's it, you're all finished. Breakfast with pieces that you're gonna probably throw out, so. All right, so we're gonna give it a shot here. First, I just wanna see one of these little pieces. Perfect. A little tougher than, for instance, like a leaf here of the mushroom. It's a little tougher, but this is good. If you never had these, you should go get them. If you don't find them, buy them. But you always want to take a professional with you. Oh, they're so good. We're going to be pickling in a few minutes, so stay tuned. Okay, so first we did the harvest. Then we showed you how to clean them. That's a grueling process for these mushrooms if they're not cultivated. As you could tell, uh, we're still going here after like 15 hours. Now we're cooking them. So the first way was fresh. You could just saute them up, make sure they're cooked thoroughly. The second way is boiled. So if you boil them, if you want to keep them long term in the freezer, say you want to saute them, say you want to put them in a soup, say you want to do uh, whatever you want to do, make a stuffing out of them, uh, chop them up, make a burger. You're going to want to boil them, parboil for about five minutes, and then you could take them out and freeze them in Ziploc bags. But that has a process also. You don't want to just throw them in a Ziploc bag. You want to make sure you have enough content. I'll show you that. So stay tuned. The third process is pickling, which is the title of this video. So you're going to probably want to see that. So the way we do that is the boiling is just regular water for the freezer one. Now here we have another pot and that's water and white vinegar. And it's one part white vinegar, two parts water. So that also, as you boil down, is going to dissipate the vinegar content. So you got to keep that in mind. You're going to want to either add or change. As you do about two or three inches of mushroom, the water is going to turn from clear to dark because you just you pick up different um, colors from the mushrooms itself and maybe a little dirt could be in their sediment, but that'll sink down to the bottom. We're going to get started here with the process and we'll take it from start to finish all the way through. And for mason jars, you can put it in whatever jar you want. Depends the size. This is, uh, I think, the half pint here. Um, but what works really well, because you don't have to vacuum seal these. You don't have to water bath them. You don't have to fully seal them or pressure can them. They're pickled. They're cured by vinegar. They're not cured by uh, the sealing of it and killing of sterilization, which is a longer process. So these here, these are like artichoke jars. They work really well because they're large. You could get a lot in there and we put other flavors in there too, seasoning. So um, these, we just put them in, we pop them in the fridge and then as we want them, we just take them out and we eat them. So these are the jars that we're using. We'll use other mason jars as well. So for the boiling and the freezing part, make sure you're on high here because as you drop them in, they're gonna cool the water down and just kind of put them in. You're gonna see your water is gonna cool, then you gotta put the lid on it and bring it back up to temperature. So that's gonna be another process. But these are phenomenal all winter long. You could take them and defrost them, cook them. They are delicious. You really can't beat these mushrooms. They're one of my favorite, if not my favorite. Uh, not for flavor, flavor-wise, they're they're not as strong as like a black trumpet or a chanterelle, 
I think that has a little more flavor or morel, but these are pretty good. And they're gonna cook down too, so you could put quite a bit in there. Now it looks like a lot here, but it'll cook down once they wilt. So we could even add more to this. You just gotta watch your water. Um, a lot of time the water will even bubble up, like doing a chicken broth kind of thing. So you gotta just pay attention to where your water levels are. Check the lid off. And from the time of boil, you're gonna want it to boil for five minutes at least. You don't wanna go too much though, because if you go too much, you're gonna make them too mushy. And we like to keep them firm and crunchy. So just keep an eye on them. The liquid, you gotta watch because it seems to rise up a lot. And uh, in five minutes, we'll take them out and I'll show you. So here's the other batch. Here's the water with the vinegar. And we're just gonna put that in as well. I think we have a lot of uh, water in this one, but we'll see how it goes. You can really smell that vinegar. We put a little more than um, what they say you should put just because we wanna make sure that we really do pickle them well but you're cooking them also, but the pickling is the preservative that's in there. These ones are boiling up for freezing. So, got quite a bit here, so make a lot of jars. Good homemade jardinier. Jardinier. Say it with me, folks. Jardinier. So we don't want to overcrowd this one just because we have a lot of vinegar in there, but I don't want it to spill over. So we'll check on it in about five, 10 minutes. So a key tip, the mushrooms I got today were aged a little more, they're bigger. For pickling, those are better because they're gonna stay more crunchy. Versus a smaller one will be better for sauteing up right then, but they're good no matter which way you do them. So these have been sitting here for about uh, 10 minutes, they boiled up, and now we're just gonna take them and strain them out. Okay, and you're gonna put them in a tray. You're gonna spread them out and just let them cool until they're uh, cool to touch. All right, so just let that cool up and then we'll bag them. All right, so you wanna let that cool outside, it's cold. We're in the 30s and 40s today, so we're just going to let that cool off as quick as possible and let it cool down, and then we can put them in bags. Just keep it to uh, freezer proof that they're a freeze bag. You don't want a, a sandwich bag for this. And you're just going to stuff these with these uh, mushrooms once they cool down, which they have. They're cool to touch so they don't melt the plastic and no contaminants get into it. And if you go with a bigger bag, it's cool, but when you defrost them, then you're going to have a ton of mushrooms defrosted. All right, so probably about that, you can probably do a little Just more. Make sure you have a good seal, get the air out of it. So start your Ziploc going across. And then get all that air out. It'll come up through the top there. Kind of like vacuum sealing almost. You could vacuum seal them too, but kind of don't need to with these. And that's it. So now it's pretty much, it's sealed, kind of like vacuum sealed. And because they have a lot of water in them, when they freeze, you spread that out. When they freeze, they freeze in a block. Get the air out, there's a lot of water in there and that's gonna freeze the whole block. I don't know if you can even make that out. You can probably see that's all filled with water. So they're gonna freeze solid. And that's what you wanna do. That's one. Now, these are done. This is a second batch here. We're boiling because I like freezing a lot of them. But these are the pickled ones. They've been going for about 15 minutes. We're gonna remove the liquid. Now, if you're gonna do another batch in here, what you're gonna wanna do is add more vinegar because the vinegar gets absorbed into the mushrooms. Hugged up. Same process as freezing, but different. When we go to jar them, you got to get all the liquid out of the mushroom. So we have a little technique that we use. It's very simple, so we'll show you that too. All right, so get yourself a dry pan. This is one of the processes that are important for pickling. Now these, pick, these mushrooms are pickled. You could taste them, the vinegar will be in them. 
make sure you wash your hands thoroughly. And what you're going to do is you're going to grab them and you're going to squeeze them. See all the water that comes out? So I'm going to show you uh, the process real quick. We'll get all the water out of them and then they're going to be real dry. And then they'll absorb more of the pickling agent that we put them in with the jar and oil. I'll show you that part. It's going to get all the water out. Look, look, look how much comes out. So you just want these kind of dry as possible just so they don't get um, all that excess. In so it. when we add the oil and the garlic, they'll absorb the flavors of that and they'll preserve. But right now they're all ready to go like this, nice and dry. Oh. All right, so what we're going to do is we have all the mushrooms dried now. We're going to add salt. And this is kind of like a lot of our cooking. We never use measurements, so we don't have like recipes. We just eyeball it. We've been doing it long enough. Uh, usually just a light coating on top. Um, that's enough. Same with cooking. You don't want to over season it. So that's what we do. But we do put salt. Then you have fresh chopped garlic. And that gets put all over. Those are real good. A good touch when they're floating inside the oil. It gives a lot of good flavor. We have fresh oregano right out of the garden that my mother dried. And we're going to put about one to two tablespoons throughout the whole thing. But again, this is an eye touch. So we'll just see. I mean, that might even be enough one tablespoon. And she's going for two. This is a dry Italian oregano. Okay. And then vegetable oil is the next step we're just gonna put a little coating in here with this you can definitely keep this a year uh, we've done it but usually we eat it within a year um, could they go two? probably I mean it's pickled so I don't see why not but um, you know we eat them within one year so you just get them coated nice and easy and then we're ready for jarring you're just kind of trying to get the seasoning mixed up there. Make sure it's all over everything. This way you have seasoning on all the different uh, blades of the mushroom. Once it's incorporated, you get your clean jars. Make sure they're all washed. Okay, and we're just going to fill them up. But you're not packing them because you still got to put the oil in there. So kind of like doing the canned meat that I did in the past, you want to leave about an inch of head space on top. There you go. Vegetable oil, and we're going to fill the jar. You could use the bare lard that I did too. That's another thing, but you have to have this oil or the air will get to it and spoil it. So the vinegar is going to come out of the mushroom again and mix with the oil. And you'll have a really good pickled flavored mushroom. But just make sure you have enough oil all the way up to the top. And another thing, when you do these, when you take them out, you don't just eat them with that oil, unless you're, you could throw them in a salad, I guess, but it's vegetable oil. We take them and put them in paper towel and we squeeze them dry. And then you, you could serve them up, put them in an antipasto, or you could put them on a sandwich for bread, but they're very good. So she's just sealing them up, and there you go. Perfect product. You have a beautiful, beautiful product. Fully sealed, ready to go into the fridge. Beautiful. Can't beat that. And enjoy this video. Don't forget to subscribe.